What is up, you beautiful people out there on the internet? It is I, Michael Shockman, here with our next episode of Arthurian D&D Explained, here on the DM Shockman Institute YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be covering the episode on races, the races of Arthurian D&D, as before with the other episode, um, other two episodes. Um, I will be giving uh, um, the internet's basic premise of how things go and then I will be moving on from there I will be showing telling you guys what I do um, there will obviously be some graphics that are appearing at this point uh, toward to kind of illustrate what's going on uh, anyway with that out of the way let's get into it um, all right so the internet says in terms of races um, something along the lines of uh, humans obviously are human. Um, dwarves are more like the Germanic races, I guess. Uh, uh, pick or the Picts from Scotland and things of that nature are kind of like gnomes. Uh, halflings are from, can also be from uh, Scotland, but are also from Ireland. Uh, elves are from Ireland and from uh, the West Country of uh, um, elves and half elves. Half elves are kind of more specifically like half breeds between those two of any of the smaller races and the humans. Half orcs are um, are I don't remember what they are, but they're they're basically like a uh, kind of a a um, uh, way of doing um, some of the more savage races and some of the more savage uh, cultures like the Vikings and stuff like that which makes a little bit of sense um, but that's basically how the internet or at least one of the comments that I got on the, the um, uh, on the initial uh, feeler video that I did what, that's basically what they said it was um, the way that I do it is I actually limit the, the races that can be used by my players. Um, I limit the main races to elf, human, variant human, half elf, and half orc. And the reason I do that is this. So you have your elves, obviously. The elves in this world um, are mysterious. They're kind of... They're, they're the closest thing to fey creatures that can be played uh, directly from the forests of the world. Uh, and they and as per, not quite to the level of, of known immortality, but it is understood that elves generally live a lot longer in my world, my version of the world. Uh, anywhere from twice the length of a regular human to anywhere maybe even being truly immortal people don't really know because generally elves are seen as kind of some some people that need to be kind of revered but also stayed away from because they can be tricksy um half elves on the other hand are kind of the uh the primary people of the uh the old ways um those being the uh, Celtic and uh, um, the Celtic religions of this world um, and uh, I'll get a little bit more into the the several forms of religion that I have in, in the world uh, in, in the next video but anyway uh, half elves are kind of like the the cross point between uh, any of the other races that are able to be played by the players um, whether they be orcs and uh, humans, or elves and humans, or what have you. Um, standard humans are basically just what you find your everyday person as. That's the one that gets a plus one to all their stats. Um, they're not really, they're kind of useful, but they're not really great at any one thing in particular. Um, variant humans, on the other hand, um, as I said in the classes video briefly, uh, are kind of like the otherworldly blooded humans. Um, whether those be fey touched or fey blooded or astral touched or fell touched or what have you. Generally, more often than not in my games, I limit it to being fey touched or fey blooded. 
Um, and that generally uh, imparts the magic initiate feat. I don't let them choose what feat they want to take most often. Um, I'm basically like, hey, if you want to play this, you're going to get some magical ability, and you're and you have the option to uh, use some of the other optional class rules and and uh, race rules if you want to uh, to kind of uh, fill things out. So um, that's that. And then last but not least, we have half orcs, and this is where <laughs> this is where I get some people being like, but why? Um, and that's that half orcs in my world, in my version of the world, aren't actually like, they're not the representation of monstrous races. They are the literal embodiment of the remain, the, the last remaining bloodlines of the Neanderthals. And they usually come most often from Scandinavia or Midgard in my, and if you're looking at the map right now, they usually come most often from Midgard. Um, and the idea behind that was that those are basically like the remnants of a, a, a dying race that, uh, or at least in our world, a dying race that died out thousands of years prior to when this, this thing took place. But still, there are people in, the, in our day and age, there are people who still have the genome of Neanderthal. Um, and you, they're not always visibly, like, outwardly visible to have, to have that, uh, to have traits of that. But I've known a few people in my life, personally, who, when they told me that they were, that they had gotten their genome studied and, uh, gotten their genealogy taken care of, that it showed that they had Neanderthal traits, I'm like, yeah, I can kind of tell you that ahead of time, um, mainly because they had really big foreheads and um, I knew one guy in particular who the the historical um, and proto-human uh, uh, depictions of Neanderthals, this guy looked like he could have been one of them, uh, which is, from what I understand, is actually a very rare uh, thing to be able to have. Uh, large frontal cortex forehead. Um, he was very smart. He was brilliant. Uh, and don't let anybody tell you that Neanderthals aren't, uh, weren't, were dumb people. They weren't the traditional Ungabunga cavemen. They were very, very intelligent. They were just, bef they were just intelligent in a different way because they didn't have, um, they didn't have the technological expertise that we did. Um, and it makes you wonder what would have happened had they been able to get that expertise? Would they have still been around? Who knows? Anyway, guys, um, yeah, uh, that's going to about do it for this session, for this episode. Um, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please consider uh, liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also, be sure to ring the bell icon if you never want to miss out when our for when our videos go live on YouTube. Last but not least, please check out the links down in the description. Uh, I am a self-run channel, so if you check those out, please consider um, following them and doing what they say. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anyway, guys, I'm Michael Shockman. I've been your host and commentator. And until next time, remember, as always, keep it real, keep it safe, keep it healthy. And we'll see you guys again soon in Albion. Later, everybody.